Why do the climate models get the effect of CO2 wrong? There's a structural reason for it. First of all, let's examine the direct effect of CO2, carbon dioxide. The effect of carbon dioxide is well established in physics. It's based on laboratory results that are over a century old. It has the greenhouse effect as infrared radiation tries to leave the Earth. It is impeded by the greenhouse gases, including carbon dioxide, and some of it is reflected back to the surface of the Earth. Those reflections of the heat, that trapping of the heat, keep the surface of the Earth about 33 degrees, 33 degrees warmer than it would otherwise be. So we need those greenhouse gases to keep us warm down here. But obviously, if we're adding more CO2 to the atmosphere, there's going to be more heat trapping, so it's going to warm. The question is, how much? Well, we know that from the physics too. We know that each time the concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere doubles, the surface warms up by about 1.1 degrees. Now, some people say 1.0, some people say 1.2, whatever. About 1.1 degrees. But that's the, only the direct effect of CO2. If everything else stayed the same, that's what you'd get. Pretty much everyone agrees on that. Warm scientists, skeptical scientists. But then along come the feedbacks. You see, the Earth reacts to that warming. In particular, you get evaporation and humidity and clouds and all sorts of stuff changes. And that changes the total effect. And this is where the debate really starts. These feedbacks, as they're called, these reactions of the Earth, some of them cause more warming, enhance the warming. Some of them counteract the CO2 warming and they cool it. Now, the way the climate models work is like this. Schematically, if you increase the amount of atmospheric CO2, every time you, the direct effect of CO2 is that every time you double the concentration of CO2, you add about 1.1 degrees to the surface temperature. Then the climate models say, ah, well, due to the feedbacks, you can triple that temperature, times three, and amplify it. And that's what you actually observe. The way it works, if CO2 doubles by so about 2070, 2100, as we're on course to do, the climate models estimate that the temperature increase due to the CO2 will be about 1.1 degrees times 3, or about 3.3 degrees. So about 2070 or so, according to the IPCC and the, and the theory of man-made global warming, we're on target to raise the temperature by about 3.3 degrees, which is a fairly substantial amount. So where does that amplification come from in the climate models? Well, it comes from a guess made around 1980. The dominant feedback, the overwhelming feedback, are the one is sort of the feedback due to water. If the CO2 warms the surface, most of the surface of the planet is ocean, so there's going to be more evaporation. The stuff that evaporates, the, the gaseous water called water vapour, also known as humidity, will increase. But water vapour is the main greenhouse gas. Carbon dioxide is the second most important greenhouse gas. So, if the surface is warming and causing more water, water vapour in the atmosphere, that means there's more greenhouse gas in the atmosphere, so that's going to amplify the warming. There's going to be even more warming due to the water vapour as well. And that's where the amplification comes from. Now, how do they arrive at times three? Well, the answer is fairly simple. We know how much extra warming there's been since 1750, before the Industrial Revolution started. And we know how much extra CO2 there's been since 1750. Now we know from the direct effect of CO2, the 1.1 degrees per doubling, we know how much warming that extra CO2 caused. But to get all the warming we've observed since 1750, you have to multiply by three. So the direct effect could be responsible for a third of the warming since 1750. So the guess is that the other two thirds is caused by the amplification, the feedbacks, the clouds and humidity. So two-thirds of the warming in the climate models is due to amplification by feedbacks. It's not directly due to CO2. Now, they rarely t admit that in public. They'll, they'll admit it if you ask them. It's not a secret. But they don't hear about it. What you hear about in the public is the direct effect of CO2. Oh, it's due to CO2. Well, only a third of it's due to the CO2. The other two-thirds is based on a guess about what happens to clouds and humidity. And that's the bit for which there's no evidence and it's a lot more uncertain. That's what the argument is about. Now, the missing hotspot and the outgoing radiation both independently show that that amplification is not happening at all. The, miss the hot spot is due to the amplification, the, the changes in the clouds and the humidity, and it simply isn't there. And the outgoing radiation shows that the climate models, with their threefold amplification, are trapping heat far too aggressively. 
So if there's no amplification, two-thirds of the predicted warming goes away, which helps explain why the climate models overestimate air temperature and ocean temperature increases. Here's the sceptical view. It's almost the same. We have that rising atmospheric C uh, CO2 level, we get 1.1 degrees extra on surface temperature every time the CO2 level doubles. But the sceptics say that the feedbacks dampen or reduce the overall warming. They halve it, multiply it by a half. The effect this has on the calculation, by 2070 or so when CO2 is doubled, now we get a 1.1 degrees times a half is about 0.6 degrees. A very mild warming, not really worth doing very much about. Skeptics say have the same chain of reasoning, except they take it one more step. They say, all right, CO2 causes surface warming, surface warming causes more evaporation, so there's more water vapor or humidity in the air, but that causes more clouds, and clouds cause cooling. The clouds reflect the sunlight, so it doesn't even get to the earth. You know that when a cloud goes overhead, it feels cooler. So if all this extra water vapor is causing more clouds, then that'll cool the planet. Hence the dampening effect. Furthermore, the skeptics point out that every long-lived natural system, in order to be stable, needs to be net dampening. If you respond to a perturbation by amplifying it, sooner or later you'll go into some unstable state. And the Earth's climate is stable. We've never had runaway greenhouse effect like, say, Venus has. And that strongly suggests the net feedbacks are dampening. So, the guess that CO2 was the only force is the only force changing temperature has led to two, led to two aspects of the climate models. First of all, it meant that we omitted natural forces in the models, except for the sun's heat, which has stayed pretty constant. Secondly, it meant that we had to introduce this amplifying factor of three to get the climate models to explain the temperature rise in 1750. If it was just CO2 causing that rise from 1750 to now, the temperature rise, we'd need an amplifying factor of three. But the climate models clash with reality, they clash with the data. The amplification isn't there. So something is very wrong. So the theory that rising CO2 is the main cause of the, what, the global warming we've seen in the last century is wrong. There must be something else causing the warming because CO2 can't account for it. If you want to read more or, find, or download the data yourself and check this theory, please go to my website. It's at sciencespeak.com and look for the paper Climate Coup the Science. It's at layman level, it's simple to understand, it shows you with the data, how to download it, and I think you can figure it out for yourself. Thank you.